worship the Lord. What a time we'll have over there. But right now we're having the time with his presence here with us. We can worship him. We can have the miraculous today. Hallelujah. My, what a Savior. Right now I bring to you a young man who is a thoroughbred in the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a young lad, his family went on the mission field in Europe. He was raised on the mission field, sent home to America for high school and college. Gave his life to 
the Lord in ministry. Today he pastors in Section 11, Eastgate Pentecostal Church in Vider, Texas. This man is unwavering in his faith in his presentation of the apostolic message. He is a non-compromiser. He believes this truth. He believes in Jesus Christ. And he loves the people of God. Today, we pray God's blessing, anointing on Brother Matthew Tuttle as he comes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother McCoy. Praise the Lord, everybody. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8, and we will read through verse 13. As you're turning there, I give honor to uh, my father-in-law who just introduced me, my presbyter, an incredible man of God. Thankful my wife is here, my family, my children. I'm very, very, very blessed. This district board, thankful for the leadership of Brother Story. Roberts, just figured out Brother Roberts and I share the same birth date and birth year. So man, well, this, this has to be the youngest district super, or district secretary in the history of the UPC. My goodness, we're young and uh, he's doing a great job. Amen. I'm so thankful. I pastor the greatest people, Eastgate United Pentecostal Church, Inviter. I love him so much. I see my bishop, Brother uh, uh, Edwards is here. Amen, and I love him so, so, so much. Amen. Thank the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. If you're arrived there, say amen. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat. And they made him drink water and they gave him a piece of cake, of figs and two clusters of raisins and when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days, three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to the Amalekite. My master left me, because three days ago I fell sick. I fell sick. Amen. Look at your neighbor and give them this final. It's, I give honor to Brother Draper, those that have already preached before me and those that are coming. Aren't you thankful for the word of the Lord we've already heard? Amen. Come on, why don't we put our hands together for God's word, God's man. I, your, your pastor, you're blessed. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, they found me where my enemy left me. Father, I thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing. And I'm thankful for what you're about to do. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truth, this great one God, Jesus name message. Thank you, God, that we can stand on it. Thank you, Lord, for what's already happened. I pray you'd anoint me now to deliver your word to these wonderful people. In the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. I'm checking to see who's professional Pentecost and going to go ahead and sit down. <laughs> you can be seated with one condition. I'll, there's just one condition because I have to stand the entire sermon. I will let you be seated. If I say something true, you'll stand back up and say Amen. If you agree and we make a pact, this is a vow you're making with me right now, that if I say something true, you will stand up and shout amen, then put your hands together and you can be seated. And if you ain't going to preach with me, you got to stay standing the whole time. That is your punishment. <laughs> God is good. These people over here are going to have to keep standing the whole time, the whole time. It Y'all don't believe God is good in the Texas district? Come on. Oh, I need some. You know, sometimes you just need to hear God is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated. In our text this evening, we, we find David, and he has uh, fled uh, from Saul, and he's lodging amongst his enemies, and now he's returning from a battle. 
He sees the smoke rising from where his home once was. And as they come up over the final hill, they see the remains of their tents and the smell of smoke engulfs them. The crackle of smolding ember is magnified by the silence, the missing sounds of their children, the sounds of their wives and mothers. The, the pans are no longer clinging. All that they have has been taken and what had been left has been burned. The enemy, the Amalekites, have come and taken their families and burned their homes. It is here in frustration that, that the men that rode with David turned on him with the idea to stone him and slay him. No one was there to encourage him, but he faith, uh, famously in this passage, uh, the Bible says he encouraged himself uh, in the Lord. Sometimes you just got to encourage yourself uh, in the Lord. Amen? Come on, sometimes the preacher's not going to preach the sermon you like. The song's not going to be the song you like. You just got to learn how to encourage yourself uh, in the Lord. And then David asked God. He says, God, should I, should I pursue? Should I go and get my kids and my family back? Now, hold on, dear friends. I, I think this is an interesting prayer. It's a prayer I probably wouldn't have prayed. If, if, if you come to my house and take my kid, no, if you come to my house and take my dog, uh, I'm serious, you take my dog, I'm, I'm loading up all three of my ARs, I'm getting my 300 wind mag, I'm getting my, my 30-30, getting all my pistols, putting them in my truck, and baby, you going down. I ain't going to pray about it, you don't take my dog. Y'all like, hey, hey, come on, come on, I thought I was in Texas, I thought I was, I thought I had some men. But David goes to prayer. And he says, God, I know you work at a higher level than I do. And if you feel like what I love most needs to be taken from my life, I trust that you do all things well. So, Lord, I'm going to be like Job here and say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed. Be, come on, some of you have lost some people, lost some things, lost some stuff. Come on, that you're, and you're angry at God, but sometimes God takes things, come on, out of our lives. Oh, Abraham, you can pray Lot out of Sodom, but Lot's children, they're going to become the Moabites who introduce Baal worship into the church. Might have been better if you'd have just let God be God. I said God's still good. God's still sovereign. God's still wise. Even when he does things and takes things that I don't think are good, he's, can you give him praise when what you thought you had to have goes missing? Can you give him praise when your health cripples and you have a promise, come on somebody, of a healing? Oh God, if I don't need it, you can take it. I trust you. I trust you. But it's a, it's a happy story today for the Lord gives him the answer that he desired. And he says, go get him, son. So, so David, he, he gets together with his generals. He says, go, go get the, the, the tomahawks and go get the whatever the Taliban didn't take from us in Afghanistan. Get it all. We're going to get the family back. And so he goes out to get back what God has promised him, and, and he goes after, only there's now a problem we're presented with. Where are they? Where are my kids? Where are, where's my, I know they're gone, but I don't know where they are. There's somebody here. Come on, it's been stolen, and the question is, where is it? And, and, and David, not knowing, just started going. Come on, some people, they, 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 they sit on their pew waiting for God to call them out. Well, I need Lee Stone King to come by, point, my, point his finger at me, and tell me my divine. He's not coming by. Come on, if you want to find your divine purpose, uh, what you need to do is just get up and go. I said get up and go. Hey Mr. Blind Man, I know you got mud on your face. I know you can't seem to see but God said go wash. And if, if you'll just start walking you'll start seeing. If you'll start moving, something will happen in your life. I wonder if you could just give God praise like I'm just going to keep on going. Where are we going? I don't know. What are we doing? I don't know. But I'm going to keep on teaching my Sunday school class. I'm going to keep on singing in the praise team. I'm going to keep on preaching. Come on, pastor. Keep going. Go ye into all the world. Go and I'll unfold the purpose for your life. High five your neighbors say you got to go. And so he goes and 
And as he is riding, as he is going, God starts providing. Come on. Where, his finger, where God's finger points, his hand will always provide. As he goes and follows the word of the Lord, he finds this, this servant, this Egyptian servant of the Amalekites. The Amalekites had left this man. The Amalekites were the enemies of God's people. They were wicked. They would attack the, the people of God at their weakest moments. They would come in from the back and there they would slaughter and kill, abduct the weak. It, the, the Amalekites are a, a type of the spirit of antichrist in our world today. They didn't fight fair. I'm going to tell you something. The devil don't fight fair. I said this spirit will come in and it attacks. He doesn't have the courage to, to attack you man on man. He ain't going to fight you face to face. It's weak. He's going to reach into the womb of an innocent child. And that's, where, that, that, that's what he kills. And Good God, I thought I was in America. I said it's a spirit that's killing our children. He's not going to fight you, Dad. He's going to get into kindergarten and bring a drag queen to read him a book. Come on, somebody. That's how hell fights. He comes against the most innocent amongst us. But just because he doesn't fight fair doesn't mean we don't fight back. Get up. Put your hands together. Get your dancing shoes on. Get your hallelujah. Get your amen. Get your come on. Get your dance back on. Fight back. They had dropped him off, and there's this servant, and that's what David finds. He finds this servant that has been left. He, he had been serving, this Egyptian had been serving these Amalekites as they had been fighting, and he had taken care of them. And, hey, hey, Mr. Egyptian, he said, polish our, polish our shield and hand me that, hand me that uh, arrow and clean the tent and, and make our beds. Oh, good job. Here's a donut. Good job. Here's a, a croissant. Good job. You're doing a good job. As, as long as he was serving them, they took care of him. But when he wins and the servant gets sick, they don't offer him medical help. They don't offer to carry him. They, don't, they, don't, they, they stop feeding him. They don't give him anything to drink. They just ditch him. Isn't that what the devil does? I said, isn't that what the devil does? Man, y'all ain't man and like the devil's been good to you. I, I, I said, the devil does that. I said, the devil takes everything you got. He'll take your health. He'll take your family. He'll take your kids. He'll take your ministry. He'll take everything you've got and drop you off on the side of the road. Come on, let, let me just preach to somebody who came to camp meeting, uh, laying in a field uh, on the side of the road. Uh, and it feels like everything, the adversary has taken everything, uh, everything that he could take. Uh, three days he had no food. Now, you can make it three days without food. But they say you can only live three days without water. And so it is that they come along and they find this Egyptian on the third day of no water. That means they found him on the last day of his life. I'll say it again. They found him on the last day of his life. Somebody walked into camp meeting. Come on, on this Thursday morning. And you said, you've already said to your husband, I'm on the last day. Come on, preacher. You looked in the mirror and you said, I'm at the end. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I'm done. I can't. I'm going to go to this camp meeting. I'm going to try just one more time. But I'm at the end of my life. But I'm thankful that you're in the house of God. Because while he was on his last day to live, you want to know who found him? I said, who found him on his last day to live? 1 Samuel chapter 30 and 11. Here's who found him. You got my, it's a messy screen. Oh, there it is. And who found him? Who? They. Look at your neighbor and say, they found him. David did not find him. Say it again. They found him. They found him. Who's they? Look at your neighbor and say, you are part of they. 
I know you're on your last day. I know it seems like it's almost over. But look at you, baby. You're with they. And we're going to pick you up today. I said, we're going to pick you up. You're with the church of the living God. I said, you're with the church of the living God. Come on, I wonder if I got somebody that came in broken by life, but they found you. I said, you came in busted, but they found you. You came in broke, but they found you. Let me just tell you, sometimes your victory isn't connected to how good Brother Tuttle preaches. This afternoon, you getting back up isn't connected to how great our district superintendent leads the service or how fancy the song is. Maybe your victory is connected to the person next to you. Woo! You need to look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor, right? Not the same neighbor you keep looking to because you've hurt the other neighbor's feelings. Look at that other neighbor. Look at his hand and say, are you going to help me shout today? Are, now, I got another question. Are you going to help me get up to that altar? If they said no or they looked at you like you were speaking Chinese, here is your next instruction. Get up and get out. Get out and find yourself somebody that will take you by the hand and say, I need a they. I need a they that will shout with me. I need a they that will shout. Hey, come on, you're the church. You're the church. If you see somebody next to you right now and they're discouraged, grab them by the hand and say, they aren't going to leave you. They aren't going to forsake you. We're going to pick you up. Thank God for the church. Now the preacher this, the preacher that, 73 times in your Bible it says all the congregation. Come on. You need, we need you. It, 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 the victory in your city and the victory in your, your church is not just linked to him preaching a pretty sermon. It's linked to you getting in and saying I'm going to be part of the solution. I'm going to be part of the solution. Well, well. The church, you know, the church hurt me. Wrong. The church did not hurt you. The church saved you. Ooh, I got a little patty cake from all the church hurt people. Sin hurt you. I said, sin. Somebody gossiped. That wasn't the church. That was sin. Somebody said something dirty about you. That, come on. That wasn't the church. That was sin. The church found you on your worst day when you were addicted to crack, when you were messed up in money, when you were addicted to and afflicted, and they reached down. When they did, come on. When you didn't have a dollar, and they paid your rent, and they helped you along. That's the church. Thank God. Oh, I know sometimes it, it stinks a little bit in the church. I know sometimes things happen. I mean, can you imagine in the ark? You in that sucker? For a year, eight dudes, you can't tell me, eight different people. One of them didn't get seasick. And you see Ham crawl up a ladder. And uh, Noah... He's up behind him. He gets sick. He throws up right into his face. Oh, I can't believe you threw up in my face. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quit the ark. Okay, Ham, go up to the edge and look over the side. You know what you're going to find? You know that thud that you keep hearing? Boop, boop, banging up against the ark? Look over the edge. You know what that is? Those are corpses of 50 million people that the ark is wading through. So sure, go ahead and quit. I know you don't like the smell of elephant poop. I know you don't like the, the look and, and, and the throw up and the, and the garbage. But in the ark, it's better than in the water. Keep me in the ark. The ark isn't hurting me. The ark isn't destroying me. The ark is the only hope I have, so keep me with they.
I said, keep me with they. Keep me with the people of God. Ooh, I say it again. I, the, the devil would love nothing more for you to jump overboard. Oh, you're going to show us and jump overboard? You ain't going to show us. You're going to die. I said, you're going to die. The enemy is coming against the church like never before. I'm going to say it again. The enemy is our enemy. Satan is our enemy. The spirit of suicide is our enemy. The spirit of homosexuality is our enemy. The spirit of lust and anger, adultery is our enemy. The devil is our enemy. He is your enemy. He, not them. If you're retweeting posts that attack the body in any form, you're on the wrong team. Stop echoing the voices of those that left us. If they're saying it on the internet, I don't agree with it. They're on the wrong side. Get me on the team they. Get me on the team Jesus. Get me on the team David. Somebody ought to give God praise. If, you think, if you're not thankful for the church, sit there and stare at me like a deadhead. But if you, if you know about the power of the church, you need to get up on your feet. Take 10 seconds and lift your voice and let hell know. Ooh, come on, somebody. He accorded the devil lied. He tried to tell you to quit, and all that's going to die is your ministry. All that's going to die is your future. Get back in. Well, I'm not. Hey, hey, Gypsy, your life's not over. Your purpose isn't gone. God's got something great for you. Oh, I, no, I got hurt by the last group. I ain't never going to trust nobody again. Okay. You know what's going to happen? You're going to die. You need us. But here's the little secret. We need you. I'll say it again. The church's purpose is linked to some dude out in the street today that's living on his last day. I said the greatest revival, the victory over the demons in our church is linked probably to some little insignificant nobody that you are rude to at Walmart. But oh to God that we wouldn't just be holy, we'd be happy. Go to Walmart and realize I got to get them in the church so I can get my baby back. I got to get them back in the house of God so I can get my family back there. I need you. They need you. I said they need you. We need you. Take your neighbor by the hand and dance with him. Just say, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. Woo, that's it. That's it. Come on. There's healing taking place. There's victory taking place. I need the church. I need the body. I need you. I can't say I don't, know. I don't always like you, but I need you. I need you. Somebody shout Jesus. That's pretty good if you believe he's the second in the Trinity, but I thought I was at a day service with the crazies. I said shout Jesus. Yeah, now put your hands together. Let your voice match the volume of your hands. And praise ye the Lord. Well, they took, they took my sword, my spear. They took my health. They took my job. They took my, they took my family. They took, look here, Mr. Egyptian. You can focus on what the enemy stole. Or you can focus on they standing in front of you with bread and water, willing to help you. Let me tell you, if God needed what you lost in order to get you where he needs you to be, you would have never lost it. Because he's the God of what's left over. And he has a way of using what the adversary leaves behind. I'll say it again. Oh, but you don't understand. It's dead. It's over. It's not going to happen. No, no. The, thus saith the Lord, Amos 12. Thus saith the Lord as the shepherd rescues from the mouth of the lion. Two legs 
or a piece of an ear. So shall the people of Israel who dwell in Samaria be rescued with the corner of a couch and bed. He says the lion may have a, a, a little ear and a little leg, but you're going to be rescued. I know you came to camp saying, oh, God, all I've got is an ear and all I've got is a leg. You're in a good spot. If you got an ear, you can hear. And faith comes by hearing. If I can hear, I can get faith. And if I can get faith, all things become. And if you got a leg, that means you can leap. And if you can leap, the Bible says you can leap for joy. That means you can get happy and you can get full of faith. No matter how bad it is, you ought to get up on one leg with one ear and say, I'm going to be blessed. I'm not quitting. I'm going to keep living for God. Oh, it's over. They, the enemy stole it. One of my favorite stories in the Bible. I've been preaching 22 minutes. I got a timer because I have my wife here. First Samuel 17, 34. I love the story of David killing Goliath. It's just awesome. The Bible says, David, this is an interesting passage. David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear. It's crazy he has to tell him this story. If I had killed a lion, everybody would know about it. You know what I mean? But he's saying, he said, hey, Saul, I'm qualified. Hey, good-looking young man right there. I love you. He said, Saul, he said, there was this one time a lion came. And, and he, took, he took a lamb out of the flock. Bear came, took a lamb out of the flock. Now, look, I know you because I am one of you. <laughs> I'm human. And I don't know about y'all, but I know how it is in San Antonio, but I know you're pretty brave, Brother Cox, but you have a puppy? What's your puppy's name? Coffee. Not mocha, not latte. The real thing, because you're a real man. Aren't you thankful for real men, real leaders? I'm going to tell you, this is one of them. Well, brother, this guy's a little coffee. He, he's out in the backyard doing number two. And I'm sure you got a little chain link fence or something to keep coffee safe. All of a sudden, big old lion got out of the San Antonio Zoo. And he jumps over the fence. And coffee. And I ain't making fun. You're great. But I know you'd be like me. You ain't going after coffee. You walking in the door, you're going, Sister Scoggins, little coffee. Just turn back into a bean. We 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 gonna have to get us. We gonna have to get us a Starbucks. We gonna have to get us a tea. <laughs> you you ain't going after him. What you gonna do is call the fence builders. And you'll say, look. I got robbed by a lion, so I need to build a wall, and I need, see, Coffee had a little, couple little, little puppies, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll celebrate, we'll just suffer the fact that Coffee is gone. So build me a wall to defend the puppies I've got left, and I need a, how, wall, how tall of a wall? Tall enough to keep lions out. Come on. Because that's the mentality of humanity. I'm not going after a lion. You know why you're not going after Coffee? Because your mind has already told you Coffee's dead. Why would you go after a lamb that's dead? Come on. That's the mentality of humanity. But David said, look, I, I didn't listen to that devil that said it was over. He said, I got up and ran up after him. And I realized... That the lamb wasn't dead. The lamb was alive. The lamb was in the mouth of the lion. But he wasn't dead. Come on. The same God that can shut a lion's mouth can keep a lion's mouth open. I said the same God that shut the lion's mouth. He, I know your son's not here today, but that doesn't mean he's dead. I know your dream's in the mouth of a lion, but that doesn't mean it's over. You just need to get up. I said, you just need to get up. You know what he did? Verse 35. Verse 35. He says, I went out after that lion. He said, I, what did he do? He said, I smote him. Now, look, we, we, I'm from Vider. We don't, we don't understand all that. For all the people from Vider here, 
That means he punched him in the nose. Put the smack down. He did not sit down and have a discussion. You know what, Mr. Lion? If you'll give me my lamb, I will give you my hallelujah. If you give me my son, I will give you holiness. In order to win my kids, I'll stop preaching again. Oh, it's tight, but that's all right. Let's just keep, I didn't have it in my notes, but I feel it in the Holy Ghost. In order to save my kids, I'll compromise my conviction. You know what hell will do? He will take the deal. He'll say, yeah, sure, give me your Holy Ghost. Give me your hallelujah. Give me your amen. Give me your, give me your separation from the world. Give it to me. And you know what he'd do? He will not release he will not release. What some of you need to do on an afternoon service is rise up and punch hell in the nose and say, I, I'm taking it back. I'm getting it back. I'm getting my joy back. I'm getting my praise back. I'm getting my hallelujah back. I'm getting my... Once he got it back, look at your neighbor and say, you got to get it back. You got to get it back. Once he got it back, the lion turns on his intended prey all along. Come on. The Bible says, keep it up there. They think I'm in the Vider Bible. I mean, this is King James. Hmm. He says, I delivered him. He says, and then he arose against me. Come on, somebody. That, he's after you. You can give him your hallelujah. You can give him your praise. You can give him your convictions. You can give him, but he'll just keep taking until he gets what he really wants. He wants you. Woo! You're not going to win the world becoming like the world. We're not going to win our world compromising our convictions. Give it to me. The Bible says the lion, the lion turned on him. And what did he do? What did he do? And he smote him. And how long did he hit him? Look at me. How long did he hit him? Did he pop him and say, that's good? No. Bible says he said, I hit him until he died. You want to know when you stop shouting? When it's over. You know when you stop clapping? When it's dead. You know. Come on, I know there's a time limit on the service, but don't you stop leaping until the lion's dead. Don't you stop shouting until he's, oh, come on. We don't have to just knock him out. We can kill him dead. I need you to right now shout like the devil's under your feet. I need you to leap. I need you to leap like hell has been coming against you. He's taken some of your peace. He's come against you with cancer. He's come against you with depression. Anxiety has come into your spirit. Uh, he's told you you're not going to live. Your family's threatened walking away. You do not compromise on this night. You just start shouting. And you shout till the joy comes back in. Until the hope comes in. Somebody ought to give him praise. I said somebody ought to give him praise. Right where you're at, God's wanting to restore faith uh, that your adversary doesn't have to be put on pause. You can put an end to some things in your family on this afternoon. Uh, you can put an end against some addictions. Uh, you can put an end... Come on. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. I feel the Holy Ghost here. There's somebody walked into the building and your life and your ministry and your dreams are laying on the ground. And it's, it's over is what hell has told you. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. Preacher, I got nothing left. You've got faith. Ooh, look at the person behind you. Say, I got faith. I got faith. I... Hebrews eleven seven 7 says that by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, 
offered up Isaac. And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that Isaac shall the seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up from the... He had faith that God could raise him up from the dead. Remember they're going up the, the mountain. They've got the knife. They have the wood. And they have the fire. He wasn't just going to kill his boy. He was going to stab him through the heart and light his son on fire. What happens when you burn something? It ends up with ash. He fully believed. That's what Hebrews tells us. Abraham went up on that mountain believing, I'm going to kill this boy. And then I'm going to light his body on fire. He said, it's going to burn down to ashes. He said, and God is going to raise him up. Oh, look, I know we got all the faith healers. That's grand. And they've seen people come back from the dead. They've been dead for maybe a day or two or three, maybe 13 minutes. But let me tell you, Abraham's faith was so grand, so great, that he believed that from dust particles of what was, God could raise it back up into life. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if you came to camp and all you got is a handful of ashes. He's the God of those ashes. He's the God of the ashes. So come on, little Egyptian slave. Come on, Bo. We're going to go down. And the Bible says that he took him. That Egyptian slave took the people of God. The very dude the Amalekites thought was going to die and left behind. God used him to take him down to the enemy's camp and said, I'm going to use you to give victory to my people. Y'all looking at me waiting for the good point. That was a good point. You ought to put your hands together like you came to camp with an ash of a dream. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that our victory is in your ashes. Ooh, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, your ash pile is our victory. Your ash pile is my son. Your ashes are my dream. Your ashes are my revival. I know you came, and everybody's leaving your church, and all you got left are the ashes of a memory and a dream that God gave you. Don't give up. The revival is in the ash. He will give you beauty for ashes. I'm, 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 I'm three minutes from being done. Here's what I need you to do. If you came and you're here today and you've got something that's not just dead, but something that's been crushed, crumbled, and burned, I need you to, right now, I need your mind's eye to picture it in the palm of your hand. I need you to put, I need you to put ashes. And now I need you to take those ashes, close your hand around those ashes. I want you to step out from where you are and come up to the front. Come up to the front. I need you to bring your ashes by faith, by faith, by faith. I know the devil has told you that it's just loose particles of yesterday's hope. I know that the devil has told you uh, that they're tiny splinters of what remains. And you should learn how to, to live in suffering and live in pain. Don't cry. Don't cry just yet. We ain't going to cry. Come. No weeping. Just bring your ashes. Just bring your ashes. Come on, they're in your hand. The ministry, the dream, the hope, the child, the health. Come on, the marriage. Come on, the mental health. It's in your hand right now. Hold it in your hand. Exodus 9 and 8. Exodus 9 and 8. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take ye handfuls of ashes, and let Moses sprinkle it toward heaven, in the sight of Pharaoh, and it shall become small dust 
in the land of Egypt and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. <laughs> he said, here's what I want you to do with the ashes. Do you have them in your hands? I need you to watch me because I'm going to demonstrate to you what God desires for you to do with them. Take them in your hands. I need you to partially bend over, partially bend over at the waist. On the count of three, you're going to take the ash. Watch me. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to do what Moses did. You're going to take them and do this. And after you've done that, I need you to pick up another dream and go like this. And then I need you to pick up another dream and go like this. Then I need you to pick up another child and do this. Then I need you to pick up another hope and do this. Are you ready on the count of three? And as you begin to throw them towards heaven, this room is going to be filled with the dust particles of ashes, of things that you gave up on, on ministry that you questioned, on things that you came to camp meeting saying, there's no way. God's put it in your hand right now. And I've come on the count of three. You're going to release it into heaven and shout the name of Jesus and as dust begins to fall boils begin to form and God begins to give us victory it's not a season to mourn it becomes a season to rejoice I want you to rejoice with your eyes closed surrounded by the ashes knowing when you open those eyes come on that God has used what the enemy left behind on the count of three one two Three, take them in Jesus. That's it, keep it, keep it going. And after you've got your dreams into the air, take your hands and begin to magnify God. Take your hands and begin to bless the Lord at all times. God use what the enemy destroyed. God use what hell left me with. He left me with the broken mind, but I'm giving it to God. I'm giving it to God. I'm giving it to God. Oh, somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. Shout yes. Now look at that neighbor. Some of y'all neighbors obviously let you down back there. You made a promise you was going to get them up here, so I'll give you another chance. Everybody ought to be up now. Come on, get on up in here. Listen, now grab them. Grab your neighbor by the hand <laughs> and say, this me needs they. Look at your neighbor and say, it's humbling to say this, but I need you. I need you to help me lift my weary hands because there's still a pile of ash at my feet. It's the one I've given up on. It's the one I spiritualized to the point that God's will, that it doesn't come back to life. It's the one that I said just will never happen. I need you to help me get that ash up into the heavens. I need you to help me get victory. Come on now. I'm not going to count to three, but the minute you feel something come over you, I want you to begin to dance in the Holy Ghost with your neighbor. I want you to begin to praise God. Shout amen. Give him glory. Shout a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing a fast song. Sing one that messes hell all up. Sing one, sing one that causes dust of, of forgotten dreams to fall on the, the adversary's triumph. Oh, shout with the voice of praise. Shout with the voice of triumph. Shout with the voice of praise. Shout unto God for the victory. Start speaking in tongues. Praise Shout God. With the voice of praise. Ooh, you thought it was Shout over. With the voice of praise. Shout with the voice of praise. Shout unto God for the victory. Hey, hey, give the Lord a shout of praise. Shout with, shout with the voice of triumph. Oh, shout with the voice of praise. Oh, oh, shout with the voice 
Come on, they're really becoming a crutch for us. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. There's two groups of people the Lord just spoke to me. You're here in your ministry. I need you to, please close your eyes just for privacy's sake. It's going to be me, you. Move the story if he wants to keep his eyes open. You're here, ministry, and there's some ashes. There's some families that took some tithe and the, and the devil's told you you're not going to be able to pay the bills. Come on. There's some dreams, some things going on. I don't know what it is. It feels dry in your life right now. I need just a preacher or a preacher's wife. Would you just be honest with me? I ain't going to tell nobody. Just raise your hand and say, there it is. All right. Keep your hand up. There's many, many hands. There's probably about 30 hands going up right now. Keep your hand up. Here's what I want you to do now. You're not alone, so please keep your hand up. You're not alone. You will not be embarrassed. What I want is every other minister, if you're a saint, keep your eyes closed right now. But I want every other minister in this building to open your eyes right now. Keep your hands up. If you're a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, I need you to go find a man, a brother or a sister whose hands are up right now. They have just confessed their, their strength, their weakness right now in, in amongst you. And the Bible says that we together are going to get with them. Come on. I, I'm preaching. Oh, I feel. There it is. There is a wave right there. It's about to happen. God just spoke it to me in the pulpit that God is about to restore. And the Bible says he uses they. Restore them. You can repent by yourself, but you got to have us to be restored. Restore the dream. Restore the hope. I'm not saying you got into sin I just saying you in in some stuff now what I need you to do I want you to lay your hand on them and a brother with a brother sis with a sis if you are praying I want you to lay your hand on their heart I want you to in their ear to begin to speak with other tongues and let the gifts of the spirit begin to operate through you right now come on let the let the Holy Ghost start moving in this room that's it right there and as you begin to pray all of a sudden there's something going to break and as you feel it break I need you to take their hand and begin to shout unto God with a voice of triumph I need you to start worshiping with your fellow minister and restoration of joy is coming. A restoration of peace is coming. A restoration of hope is coming. A restoration. That's it. Oh, shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. Shout. Shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. There's restoration. Your joy is coming back. Shout for the victory. Shout for the victory. Shout for the victory. We don't have to beg, we declare it. Oh, shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. Shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. Now do it on the count of three. I need you to shout. One, two, three. Jesus. One more time. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. The final thing we're going to break And then we're going to go eat. It's not going to take long. There is a spirit of vexation of weariness. Talking about a spirit of weariness that has come upon this generation. We got 15-year-olds drinking Red Bull just to make it through a day. Come on. I have no strength. I I am weary. The Lord kind of revealed to me why there's weariness. It's not because you're doing too much. It's because you stopped running. They shall run and not be. That's why at Eastgate Church we don't dim the lights. You know why we don't dim them? We got to have aisle running. Oh, 
everybody gets nervous when I talk about their lights, but we're the people of the light. Used to be when you preached about light, people got excited. Now you preach about light and they get nervous. I had a, we were remodeling the, the sanctuary. I had a guy designing the pews. And he had his old little, his little Baptist church designer dude. He brought his little, his little outline, Mooney. He said, here it is. I said, you're going to have to widen those aisles up. He said, no, no, they're to code. I said, they're to Baptist code. <laughs> but they ain't to Pentecost code. <laughs> Pentecostal aisle width is wide enough for two-way traffic going 50 miles an hour. What happened? What happened? Are we too good to run? Yes, some of us think we are. And that's why we're so tired, because we stopped running. But on this, ooh, here's what you're going to do right now with your neighbor. You might not can go fast, but we about to, we about to, everybody face that direction. Face that direction. You right there, be warned that I need you to form an aisle, like an aisle right through here. Right through here. Spread out, spread out. Make a path because I'm about to run. If you don't make a way right here, look at me real quick. If y'all don't make a way, you're going to get hit by a freight train. Yeah, scoot over just a little bit. How many of you need some strength? How many of you need to overcome the weariness that you are in? Hey, you're about to faint. Don't stop walking. The Bible says you'll walk and not faint. You don't quit the ministry when you get tired. Here's what you do when you're overwhelmed. Here's what you do on a Sunday night when everything's coming against you. Here's what you do when all hell has got the... Here it is. Are you ready? Somebody ought to get in there and say, I feel my strength. I'm running, and I'm not going to stop. I'm not giving up. You running this aisle on a Thursday afternoon lets the enemy know I'm not done. I've just begun to run. I'm not finished. I'm just getting going. We're a pew jumping, aisle running, tongue talking, Holy Ghost separated people, and we are going forward. Shout for the victory, 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 shout for the I'm not quitting when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a place that's higher. Shout with the voice of praise. Shout unto God for the victory. Shout 
Shout! 